All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another stream in the Diamond DA62. And uh, today we're going to take off from uh, Watsonville. Let me get that up actually on the screen for you. You can see. All right. So our flight plan today is to take off from Watsonville. We're going to head out to uh, Palo Alto and then head over to Half Moon Bay and then head up the coast uh, through this VFR transition route um, to the Sausalito VOR and then our final destination will be Oscar 69 which is Petaluma. Um, my goal today is to take you through flight procedures um, for different class airspaces so we're going to be in uh, G and E airspace we're also going to be um, coming into the class um, B airspace and the mode C avail um, that's around it, um, requesting permission to get into and fly into Palo Alto. And these are all real world procedures. We're not going to use um, Pilot Edge or anything like that because I want to kind of do my own thing, but I'll mimic like if we were talking to them. Uh, and then we'll head over to Half Moon Bay, which is an uncontrolled airport. So we'll use CTAF uh, and grab our weather by ATIS and that kind of thing. And then again, another control, uncontrolled airport uh, at Oscar 69. And there we'll be again using CTAF uh, procedures and uh, flying into there. At the same time, um, I'll kind of give you some instruction on the diamond um, and go over uh, takeoff, landings, crews, and different power settings and uh, speeds for this plane. So, all right, well, let's get to it. Uh, we're sitting here on the ground at uh, Watsonville, and she's ready to go. So let's uh, get all the doors closed. Already got her fueled up for us. So all we do is close everything up. Weight and balance has been checked. We're not going to go through all that stuff today. And we'll jump right in. Battery will come Watsonville on. Watsonville Muni weather. Wind 180 yeah, and 5. Visibility more than 10. We will Sky get that clear. in a second, but hold on. I didn't want that right away. All right, I kind of already pre-programmed everything for us so we didn't have to do it. So battery is on. We're going to be checking uh, for the landing gear to be down, which it is. Our yaw trim is good. Um, also, our throttles are back. Our trim for takeoff is there. Back here, our fuel um, will come on. Alright, and our flaps are up, so we should be good. All the switches are checked. Just looking on my honeycomb here, those are checked. We'll turn up our brightness here a little bit, and then check all our fuses. Fuses are good. Alright, we're not going to do a whole outside pre-flight or anything like that. I'm going to kind of, since my goal is really to do the flying and do the um airspace and different and takeoffs and landings and stuff we're kind of going to do abbreviated uh quick start taxi and uh before takeoff uh checklist so Bear with me for just a minute just bringing up my checklist here oops there's it one. There we go. Oh, I thought I had it. It's a DA forty. Ah, there it is. Okay. All right. So first, we're just going to check our panel, make sure things okay. Um, I this is what I'd expect to see before we actually start the engine, so we're okay there. Um, we will go ahead and turn on our strobes, and then our first master can come on. We're looking at the glow plug right here, making sure that it goes hot, waiting for that light to go out, which it just did. This plane's super easy to start. 
Uh, there is no mixture, there is no prop control, it's all computer controlled. You just hit the start button and then she starts up that easy. All right, do the right engine. Same thing, glow plug is going on. Same time we're watching on that first engine for the oil pressure to stabilize, which it has. And the second engine is going live. Again, watching the oil pressure and we're good. Oil temps are coming up and everything else is coming up into the green, so we should be good. Avionics coming on and the rest of our lights can go on. We'll just throw our taxi light on and eh, we'll throw some nav lights on. All right, clear left, clear right. All right, let our brakes off. We'll start taxing out. And there is more checks if you're doing this super realistic on this plane. Uh, that was super abbreviated what I just did. But I'm not going to go through all those right now. We're just going to get up and go flying. All right, clear left, clear right, and we'll get our weather on the way out there. Watsonville Muni weather. Wind 180 at 5, visibility more than 10. Sky clear, temperature 15, dew point 11. Altimeter 3011. All right, we can set our altimeter on the way out there. Watsonville Muni weather. 11. Wind 180 at 5. Visibility more than 10. Sky clear. Temperature 15. Dew point 11. Altimeter 3011. Alright, that's it. Watsonville Muni weather. Wind 180 at 5. Visibility more than 10. Take that off. Heard that enough. All right. Approaching That's four flight you can hear. Left and right are clear. Let's turn that down a little bit. Uh, if any of you don't use four flight, I highly recommend it. It's an awesome program to use. There is, it is a fee. It's a professional program. It's what we use for real flights, um, but uh, the map that you saw me pop up on the screen, that was for flight on the web version. That's what it looks like on the iPad too. All right, we're just gonna turn right here, do a quick pre-flight. All right, on this plane, it's really easy to do your engine run up. It's all computer controlled. Um, you're literally just hitting the ECU button here uh, and that's taking care of your run up and uh, um, doing your, uh, your test for you. So, if it for just a second here. All right, hit the left. It's gonna go through two tests, an A and then a B. All right, now we go to the other side, same thing. And we turn on our repeat out heat. Our fuel pumps will come on for takeoff. One notch of flaps coming in. Our lights are set. I've already set up our flight plan, so we're good there. I'll bring this out a little bit. All right, set up our autopilot. 
I'll be hand flying it um, probably for a lot of this, but we will use some autopilot, especially in cruise and stuff. So, all right, altitude, let's say 4,000. So, we'll be good there. And vertical speed, she climbs super, super well, but we'll put this at a thousand. All right. The odd damper will come on. Flight director is on. Usually we test the autopilot, by the way, and then uh, turn it off. Set our heading indicator. And we will be in nav mode. Oops. Right, there's our altitude and there's our vertical speed all right GPS flight director vertical speed 1000 and we'll be in nav mode so we'll be good there we should be set to go all right one last check trim is set for takeoff yaw uh, is set uh, both fuel are on we have our fuel pumps on, um, yaw dampener will be coming on, and we have our flight plan set. Things up like I want it. Oh, transponder, let's do that really quick. All right, transponder will be VFR for right now um, when we request to enter in, uh, with NorCal approach into the controlled airspace, we'll be getting a squawk, but we're just going to uh, simulate that for today. So, all right, we'll go on and altitude reporting on that one, and we are set to go. And which way are we going? So heading of three, two, one after takeoff, and we're 35 nautical miles out. All right. Just double checking my, uh, I did my flow, so I'm just double checking my uh, checklist to make sure everything's good. Doors are locked, seatbelts are on, everything adjusted. Tables in their upset right position. Circuit breakers we got, flaps are good. Flight controls. That's why you use a checklist. All right, all right, good. All right, let's get out of here. What's the traffic diamond? 7062 Delta, take an active 20. This will be a left downwind departure. We'll be heading to the uh, northwest. All right, gonna hold the brakes. One last check. Everything looks good. And we're going to be uh, rotating at about uh, 75 to 78. We'll climb out initially at uh, 83 to 85. Gear will go up, flaps will go up, and then we'll be shooting for uh, 96, 98, and then cruise uh, climb around uh, 110, 115. Uh, if we should have any problem before uh, reaching or right after uh, takeoff or before we actually lift off, before rotation, we'll uh, throttle back and come to a complete stop after rolling initially if we still have runway uh, left after takeoff and we still have our gear down we'll land straight ahead back onto the runway uh, if there's not sufficient runway ahead we'll uh, land straight ahead with emergency procedures and above a thousand feet we can attempt to come back to the airport all right let's go full throttle so you're shooting for in this plane just under full throttle 
trying to get 90-ish, 95, 98. You don't want to go to quite full throttle on it. All right, 50, airspeed's alive. Instruments are then green. Everything's looking good. There we go. Rotate. Pause the brake, hit the brakes, gear up. Bring the nose down a little bit. And flaps can come up. Set trim for takeoff. That's why you got to be careful if you can see the flight director down there. That's why you got to be careful just blindly uh, following that flight director. That flight director is not taking us where we want to go. This is a left downwind, and that's where we're going to be going. So, all right, hold your ears for a second. Fly by. Oh, that's what happens every time I try to uh, look at from the other direction and do a flyby. It's always fun. All right, so you should announce your position um, when you're in the pattern. So I'm just gonna, we're coming around so quickly. I'm just gonna announce that we're uh, heading downwind. So Watsonville traffic, uh, Diamond 7062 Delta is turning downwind, runway 20. This will be a downwind departure to the northwest, climbing out of 1,000 for 4,000. What's a bill? <laughs> All right, so a little bit right rudder, but this plane does have yaw trim. So you can set that to a little bit touchy. So just trying to get set right. I'm using ortho also. Um, this is US Northern, Orbex, True Earth. It's just awesome. Uh, makes X-Plane night and day difference. So I prefer to use it whenever I can. All right, we'll start turning a little bit to get on our flight path here. Watch of traffic, Diamond 7062 Delta, climbing out at 2,100 feet. Uh, well, this last call will be heading out to the northwest. Watsonville. All right, still hand flying it. You can see our flight director there. I could be climbing a little faster if I wanted to. I got plenty of speed. I'm only at 128. We'll come all the way around. So we're going to climb to our cruise altitude of 4,000 feet today. Uh, once we get up to cruise, we'll pull back the power probably about 85%. And we can do our after takeoff checklist at this point. All right, gears up, flaps up, fuel pumps coming off. And landing light can go off and nav lights are on. So I use my four flight during this flight. Four flight is awesome. Um, just makes everything a lot easier. It's pretty expensive though, so if you're only doing flight simming and not real world flying, it might not be worth it to you. There's other programs that you can use on there, um, and a lot of people do. Navigraph, some of the other ones, those are all perfectly fine too. But if you're doing both, if you're flying in the real world and you're flying on the sim, uh, definitely makes sense to use it. All right, climbing through 3,800 feet. And let's see here. 
Yeah, we should be fine at 4,000. There's a couple of peaks there, but we'll still clear them by about 500 feet. All right, we're bringing the nose down. She'll start picking up speed. And then once I get her stabilized, we'll start adjusting um, our cruise power here in just a second. This plane is really easy to fly by hand. Um, the only thing that's a little bit difficult, and it's I like my controls, I use the honeycomb, I like to have it set pretty realistically. The only thing that can be a little bit difficult on it is the pitch. Um, she can get away from you pretty easily. Right. Bring her engines back just a little bit. All right, there we go. See, she's still just climbing, and I even brought the power back. There's Mount Umunum, I believe. I think I'm just going to continue hand flying it. We're at 3,300 feet, but that gives us a little extra space to climb over these uh, mountains here, so I'll live with that. Yeah, look at that ortho. That's just awesome. Another flyby. Hold your ears. All right, we're gonna be coming up over Class C, all in the San Jose area for San Jose International. That's all at 4,000 feet tops down to the surface. So we're actually good not to communicate with someone, but going through this area, you would definitely want um, BFR flight following. You won't want to just blast through here without uh, being on flight following. Yeah, we're pretty low. It's uh, about a couple hundred foot clearance, maybe 500 feet. Looks like we'll clear it okay, though. Right, like I said, the first place that we're heading to is Palo Alto. So realistically, I would have probably contacted NorCal per approach um, right after I had uh, taken off or shortly after that. So we'll go ahead and do that. Do a simulated a NorCal approach. Uh, well, actually, let's tune the frequency. We'll just say it's 127.4. That is one of their frequencies. I don't think it's the one down here, though. But we're doing simulated, so I'm not going to look up the map and everything. That's good. All right, there's 127.4. Still climbing. That's all San Jose down there and stuff. All right, NorCal approach, Diamond 7062 
Delta with a request. And then you wait and they'll come back to you after they probably about a couple of minutes usually. Sometimes right away if you get lucky, but they're usually talking to a whole bunch of other people. So uh, we'll just assume they're doing that for a second. Oh, don't throw white weather at me. It's supposed to be clear right now. With great visibility. Good old explain for you. Diamond 7062 Delta, NorCal. Diamond 7062 Delta is a DA62 uh, just uh, southwest of San Jose International at 4.0. Four Requesting VFR flight following to Palo Alto today. Diamond 7062 Delta, Roger. Squawk 5432 and ident. 5432 and ident for 7062 Delta. What was my makeup make believe code? I think f uh, I'll do it. All right, well, I did. I told you the pitch was kind of crazy on this one. I'm kind of all over the place, so it's definitely easier on autopilot, but that's also how I have my yoke um, set. So I don't like it really stiff for the, the settings unrealistic because when I fly other planes it's a little easier to control them so I don't try to adjust it just for one plane. I'd probably throw it on autopilot too if I wasn't trying to hand fly the whole thing so. Diamond 7062 Delta NorCal radar contact five miles southwest of San Jose International maintain 3,500 or above, expect further clearance. Recall approach. Diamond 7062 Delta, roger. Maintain 3,500 or above, uh, expect further clearance. For 62 Delta. A little turbulence here. Might throw this on autopilot if I keep on uh, losing my altitudes here. All right, we're pretty close to coming in. We're going to be entering a uh, class Delta for Moffett Field here in a second, and then it's going to be up pretty quick after that. So we're going to simulate getting handed off uh, here in just a few minutes. All right, fly by, hold your ears. You know, I think I have my taxi light still on. But you know what? In this congested airspace, it's always good to have your landing light on, so we're going to turn that on. Almost busting my altitude there. All right, so at this point, we'd be getting traffic advisories, uh, and we're going into Class Delta airspace. That's what Palo Alto is. Um, we're also coming up on the Class B airspace. And, well, we're actually in Class B airspace, but we've got clearance. Well, we don't actually. Um, I'm sorry. We're in Class e, C airspace, so we're fine um, to be there. If we were actually going into B airspace, they would have we'd have to wait for them to actually authorize us to go in. We're actually below 4,000 feet. But I just busted my altitude there, so. All right, we are about uh, eight miles out from Palo Alto, so we're going to assume they hand us over to Palo Alto. Diamond 7062 
Delta contact Palo Alto Tower, and I'm looking up that frequency right now since we're faking this. Probably should have had that ready. Uh, 188.6. So again, we're not on, um, I'm not using Pilot Edge or anything right now. Just kind of uh, making up my own verbiage for the clearances, so. And we're doing a VFR flight only, so we're all good there. All right, 118.6. If I can get that in there. There we go. And we'll say they told us to come over to tower. And we got a 1,000 foot Palo, uh, let's see. All right, Palo Tower, Diamond One, or seven zero six two Delta, uh, with you. Order seven zero seven or Diamond seven zero six two Delta. Uh, make midfield right traffic for runway three one. All right, midfield right traffic for runway three one. So at that point, we haven't been um, given clearance to land yet. We're only given clearance to basically set up for our approach. All right, so I'm bringing the power way back here. We're gonna get her slowed way down, start dropping altitude because we're way high. Should have done some of that a little bit earlier. We're gonna come around because Palo Alto is right here to our right. It's right up over here. And we're gonna drop a little faster than you would in real life, but. And from my position right now, I don't even know if we're going to make that midfield, but we'll see. All right, what was up, powder altitude right there? We're really fast, really high. There's our airport over there. We should have been midfield from the instructions I gave myself, but we'll go with this. And we'll just announce our downwind. We'll assume they uh, told us to announce downwind. We'll modify our own clearance. Nice if we could do that in real life. All right, turn downwind for Palo Alto. Okay, and this is class Delta airspace. So it is towered. Um, you do has, have to ask permission. You do have to be a transponder. And nowadays you also have to be class B for it. Or I'm sorry, uh, you have to have ADSB, not class B. All right, Palo Alto Diamond 7062 Delta downwind. 7062 Delta, roger. Clear to land runway 31. Roger, cleared land, runway 31 for 60 Delta. All right, we're just coming up on Palo, um, pattern altitude right now. Usually also they'll um, hear, I've gone in here a few times in real life and they'll call your base. All right, we're at 137, 138. We can drop in our first notch of flaps. Do our pre-landing checklist flaps, or I'm sorry, fuel pumps are going to come on. Landing light is on. Fuel is good. And 6-2 Delta, make your base right now. Rogers, base for 6-2 Delta. All right, coming out at 800 feet. Speeds are looking good. Drop in that landing gear. So we're shooting for about 85 to 90, about 85 or so over the uh, over the numbers. All 
All right. And you can't, 400 might be a little too low right here. We're gonna stay right at 400. Um, there's towers up here. They would probably have you cut that base a lot sooner than I did. I was kind of far out. Um, there, that's why they usually call your base here. So you can see those towers coming up and you won't clip any of those. So we're gonna maintain level right here. All right, final check, gas, undercarriage, mixture. There is no mixture on this plane. There is no props. It's all computer controlled. So we're good to go. And last thing of flaps coming in, start bringing the power back. We'll trim her out. Short final. And usually they'll call it a wind check for you right here. Here is down, checking the three green. It's a short little runway too, so you gotta be on your mark. 87, call it 85 over the fence. Wind's being nice to us today. Power all the way back, up the nose up. And she's down. Flops coming up. We even made that first uh, taxiway. That's pretty good. And they would uh, contact us. I'm not going to do all that right now, but they would contact us, uh, tell us to contact ground, tell us what taxiways to, to take, what our intentions were. But since we're going right back to a takeoff, we're not going to do all that. On the way back, I'm actually going to set it up for the takeoff so we can get going right away. So flaps are down. So we're going to be cutting back to um, Half Moon Bay for the next airport. That's an uncontrolled airspace, so it's just common traffic advisory. The one that we just went into is um, Class Delta airspace with Class B airspace, um, which is above it. So it's pretty busy when you go into the Bay Area here in real life. Um, you got a lot to deal with. You're uh, squawking. It's kind of like if you guys have flown um, VFR on here, it's the same thing um, when you're talking like pilot edge, uh, but you're VFR, but you have to deal with all that. The only thing you're not doing is you don't have any approach plates that you're dealing with or anything like that. So, all right, trim for takeoff. Fuel is good. Yaw trim is good. Fuel pumps are on. Our landing light is already on. We've got plenty of fuel still. Everything's in the green. And our next destination is going to be on a heading of 267. And we're going to go out to Half Moon Bay. All right, we'll assume they gave us a clearance for takeoff at this point. Releasing the brakes. Diamond 7062 Delta cleared for takeoff runway 31. And let's see what we'd probably be doing over here. Probably do a left crosswind departure. So we'll just assume they gave us a left crosswind departure. All right, you'd still check your approach. It's clear. Check the running away. It's clear. Line up here. We've already done all our checks. We do have a notch of flaps. Running gears down, trim is set, fuel is set. All right, let's go. Full throttle coming up. We're looking for about 75 to 78, rotate. 85 to put the flaps up. All right, rotate. Pause the rate. No runway is left. That's a short little runway. Gear up. Get that nose down. Let her build up some speed. And climbing through 85. Flaps can come up. She 
really takes off right now. So fly by, hold your ears. All right, probably be a quick turn right to a crosswind departure here. They wouldn't want you getting too close to um, San Francisco traffic. So we're gonna do that. We're also gonna keep a good climb here because we got hills coming up. And we'll do our after takeoff checklist here in just a second. So he's uh, aviate, navigate, then communicate. At this point, um, probably about another minute, they would tell us to contact uh, NorCal Approach. Well, let's tell them, say that they told us to do that. So Diamond 7062 Delta, contact NorCal Approach on 127.4. Roger, 127.4 for 62 Delta. Good day. Norcal approach, Diamond 7062 Delta with you climbing out of 1600. Diamond 7062 Delta, Norcal, climb and maintain 4000. Which are climb and maintain 4000 for 62 Delta. And they would usually give us the altimeter, which right now is 3013 in this area. Make sure we get that on our backup too. All right, after takeoff checklist, fuel pumps can come off. It's the Bay Area, so more than likely I would leave my landing lights on because there's a lot of congestion here. Just double check everything, make sure everything looks good, make sure our instruments look good. And we are set climbing out of 2700. Going for 4000. So again, we're heading to um, Half Moon Bay. I don't even know if I'll make it to 4,000 by the time we have to start descending here, so. And yeah, we'll be above all the hills too. I'm just looking on my chart here. I'm at 3,200. Once we get up to cruise here, we'll pull our power back. But again, it's going to be a short little cruise. And let me get Half Moon Bay up here. All right, pattern altitude of just at 1,000 feet. And we're coming up on that 4,000. Start getting the nose down. And we can start bringing our power back. The maintain part is the hard part when you're hand flying this plane. If you're just joining me or you weren't here before, the pitch on this is uh, pretty tricky when you don't use autopilot and I've been hand flying it the whole time, so. Right, let's see what Shoot for about 80, well, let's go 80 because we're gonna get there so fast. Let's shoot for 80%, give us a better fuel. Yeah, see, she just wants to keep climbing. It's just like I have to keep on pitching her down and adjusting it. Again, I'm using the honeycomb yoke, and I could adjust my um, yoke so it's a little bit easier. I like to keep it realistic as much as I can. All right, we're going to be coming up really quick here. So let's get our frequencies. 127.275 for ATIS.
All right, we're gonna put that in there. We'll say we're with, still with NorCal. 122.8 for common traffic advisory. See, she's still climbing and I've been watching it, but take your eyes off it just for a second and she climbs. Autopilot wouldn't be any fun though. Okay, it'd be a whole lot easier though. This is a uh, True Earth US Northern, by the way, using Ortho. All right, there's our 122 point. We're gonna still say we're with NorCal though. I got all that set up. Just monitor your instruments. Everything's looking good. Everything's still in the green. Temps, fuel pressure, fuel flow, all that good stuff. And yeah, what's weather doing down there? Clear. Winds 340 at 6. And my runways. So it looks like we'll take runway 30. It's a 6 down, straight down with a 2 knot right to left crosswind. And we'll be going right traffic for 20. Alright, at this point I'd call NorCal and let them know that I have uh, the airport in sight. So NorCal. Uh, Diamond 7062 Delta have Half Moon in sight. Roger Squawk uh, VFR frequency change approved. Good day. Good day, sir. Alright, so let's start bringing the throttle back. We're going to bring it way back. We're going to lose a lot of altitude. Trim her down a little bit. We got here quick, so. And we got to worry about VFR. Good thing this just has a VFR button, makes life a whole bunch, a lot easier. And what did I say? Right traffic for runway 30 or 31, was it? Not 30. And right at a thousand feet for pattern altitude. So those hills are a little high. So you kind of have to think about how you want to line up with this. I mean, those are some big hills. I'll do a flyby so we can see a little better. But I can, I can make right traffic if I hug those hills a little bit. So, but the thing is, is also I don't like this because it's taking me right towards um, all the oncoming traffic, but I am above them. So let's do that. Another option could have been to enter midfield, go above, and then come back around, make a crosswind entry. Um, but since I'm well above pattern altitude, that's what I'm going to maintain right now. Come on, explain. Don't throw me some fog right now. It's going to make it awful challenging. All right, drop our throttle a little bit more. Oh, let me change over. I don't know why ADIS didn't go. We had the wrong frequency in there, but anyways, we're going to go to CTAF now. So I'm going to come back around like this. All ocean behind us or below us right now. And then as I come back around, I'll start dropping altitude and start getting down to pattern altitude. And then I will make that right traffic. You can see on here where I'm at. There's the airport right there. Half Moon Bay, Diamond 7062 Delta will be setting up for right traffic uh, for runway 30. There's our land. 
I was wondering where it went. I felt like it was disappearing from us. So we're just coming out of 1400. I'm going to stay a little bit higher right now. And then we'll get down to pattern altitude right when we come around. So again, this will be a uncontrolled airport. So you use CTAF for common traffic advisory. Usually listen to the ATIS. I tried to bring it up, it didn't come up. We'll see if we can do that at Petaluma for our last stop here. And then um, you just announce your positions. So we just came out of controlled airspace uh, into uncontrolled airspace. So that's why we left NorCal approach. And then we uh, pick up uh, the common traffic advisory after getting our ADS for um, Half Moon Bay. All right, lining up on three zero. Half Moon Bay, Diamond 7062 Delta is downwind, extended downwind for runway three zero, right traffic. All right, 139, 138, I'm going to drop some flaps in. Keep her slowed down. About 1100, 1000 is pattern altitude. And pre-landing checklist, fuel pumps can come on. Landing light we already had on because we we're coming through that bay area. Fuel is on and plenty of fuel. We do not have a, or we do have an undercarriage, but we do not have a prop on this plane. It's all computer controlled. So we don't have to worry about a prop and we don't have to worry about mixture. Some little bit of turbulence here, getting a little bit low. I'm almost at beaming the numbers, so that's okay. All right, landing gear can come down. I'm gonna bring up a little speed just to make this a little faster and keep our altitude here because I was a little low. Ah, not too bad actually. So this is a right hand traffic pattern that I'm doing right now. Um, you always gotta look ahead of time and find out what your traffic pattern is gonna be. So this plane cooks, so I'm going to go extend my downwind a little bit. Half Moon Bay, Diamond 7062 Delta, extended downwind for runway 30 right traffic. Full stop. All right, we start coming around. Look at that ortho, that's awesome. Makes me want to be there right now instead of all this social distancing that we're doing. All right, one last check. We do have three green. Our gear is down. Our fuel pumps are on. Ninety-five. We're going to be eighty-five over the numbers. A little bit of diagonal base there, but Half Moon Bay Diamond Seven Zero Six Two Delta on base, turning final for runway three zero Half Moon Bay. Full stop. All right, last notch of flaps coming down. Identify the runway, we're short final. Little high. Feels like we got a little bit of right to left crosswind, which what we were expecting. Eighty-eight's not bad, I'll take that. Start bringing the throttle back. And then once we're over the threshold, over the fence, so to speak, we're going to bring the throttle completely back. Maintaining a good speed right there, especially with a little bit of a crosswind. You kind of see how the nose is teetered to the uh, right there. That's me just adjusting for the crosswind, and then I'll straighten her out and then drop my right uh, wing to hold her there. Actually, that's funny. It feels like a crosswind, but that that flag showing straight down the runway. All right, throttle's coming back. Nose is coming up. Hold her up. 
Yeah, she's on the ground. Pops coming up, cleaning her up. Yeah, we make that first taxiway. I want to have to buy new brakes, but hey, I got it. And Half Moon Bay Diamond 7062 Delta, clear the active. So it's always good to tell everybody that you're clear of the active. That way they know they can do their thing and get their business done. All right, we're going to do another takeoff. Um, we're going to head up to Petaluma, California. It's pretty quick from here. We're not too far away, especially in this plane. I'll probably just max her out to get there quick. And then uh, we'll do one more uh, takeoff and landing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, sorry, I just saw your message. Yeah, I'm new on Twitch here. Just started uh, streaming here. So I'm going to try to do about three days a week. Uh, probably... Today's Thursday, probably Saturdays and Tuesdays. I might adjust that a little bit. Um, I'm a real pilot. Uh, I've been flying sim for quite a while. Uh, I fly a lot of sim. It's a good way to um, stay current. And I'm um, trying to mainly do a lot of like sim instruction, flying different planes. I'll be doing reviews and that kind of thing. I'll fly the occasional jet, but I'm more into the uh, general aviation because that's what I do for real. Um, and uh, I mean, let's face it, everybody's uh, flying the jets. They're cool and everything, but there's plenty of that to watch already. So I really want to, I have about 25 different planes probably on um, X-Plane. So I'll be going through the various ones and, and flying them and uh, just giving some light instruction in them, um, especially things that people usually don't do, uh, which is, uh, let's see, I think this is where I'm going here, which is just uh, like today, um, working with the airspace and stuff like that. Let's see here. Oh, I got to go further down. Sorry, I was looking at my four flight there trying to figure out where I needed to go. Um, so, yeah, just like talking about the airspace and stuff today, that's how it would be applied into real life is how you would do it. And then uh, whatever plane I fly, you know, I don't fly these planes in real life. I don't fly this one for certain. Uh, this one's like a two and a half million dollar aircraft. So a little out of my price range. But I've flown it enough and studied it enough. I try to fly them as real as I can um, to how they're supposed to be flowing. So, all right, I think this is where we're going here. And then a lot of places that I fly, like this is all Northern California. I'll be doing other areas. I'm using True Earth, Oregon and Washington and stuff. Um, but I try to fly a lot of the areas that I'm used to, which is all Northern California, Bay Area, that kind of thing. Just because it allows me to um, talk about those areas a little bit better. I'm used to going into the different airports for these areas. Half Moon Bay is one airport that I've flown over a lot, but I actually haven't flown into this airport. I should. I've flown it over enough that I don't know why I've never gone down there. I, just, I guess I haven't had a reason. I usually go down to Watsonville and those kind of areas and stuff. So. I'll have to get used to watching my messages in here too. I got it off to my side, so. All right, pre-takeoff checklist, fuel pumps are good. Fuel is on, trim's coming back. Brake is on for a second. Altimeter is set, our flight plan is set. So we're headed, uh, heading to the Sausalito VOR and then straight to uh, Oscar 6-9, which is Petaluma after that. We should be good to go. Instruments look good. Everything's in the green. All right, brakes coming off. Half Moon Bay, Diamond 7062, Delta, taking the active runway 30. This will be a straight out departure. Approach is clear. Runway is clear.
Right. Yeah, and I also try to announce, um, or what I've been trying to do is announce what's coming up or what I'm going to be doing. I'm on um, YouTube under the same name. It's Pistons, um, Twins, and Turbines. And then I just threw the Discord up, uh, so I'll get that active for you guys here soon. And then I got a Facebook page and some other stuff that I've uh, put together. Um, on Facebook, it's also Pistons, Twins, and Turbines. So I'll probably do pre scheduled stuff there, especially like what's coming up, what I'm going to be flying, um, and try to get everybody active. I'm going to be increasing the um, the stream here, doing some more stuff with that, um, adding some more interactions uh, with the followers and stuff like that. So, all right, let's get out of here. Full throttle coming up. Air speed's alive. Instruments are in the green. Looking good, we're looking for a rotation speed of 75 to 78. Got there quick, rotate. Positive rate. Hit the brakes. At this point, we have no runway left, so we will put the gear up. Usually try to leave that gear down just for a little bit. Um, flaps can come up. Um, just because if you have runway left and you can land, you want to use it, so. Right, we're going to be turning to the right here and we're going to be heading up um, there's a flyway here it's the Pacific uh, Pacifica flyway and that's the route they want you taking through here it kind of keeps you away from all the San Francisco International and all the traffic over there and that kind of thing so all right fly by hold yours So in real life, I fly a uh, tail dragger. I have a lot of fun in that thing. It's a blast. It's certainly not high performance like this. You're not going to get anywhere quick in it, but you can take it into grass runways and dirt runways and all those kinds of things. I got a, I got the 170 here on um, X-Plane, so I'll do a stream using the um, the uh, X-Plane or uh, in X-Plane using the Cessna 170. That's about the closest I can come to my plane. But that's a really good modeled plane, so. All right, outside view here for a second. Hold your ears again. Yeah, I love that ortho on here. Yeah, if there's anything that you want to see or interested in uh, watching me fly or stuff you'd like to me to go over, um, just let me know. I'm happy to do it. So, I'll try to pay attention to the chat as much as I can while I'm flying. All right, coming out of 2,800 feet, we'll go up to 4,000. Like I said, it's going to be a quick flight, but we'll fly right past the Golden Gate with this ortho, which is cool. It just looks foggy over the bay here, but it's not. I guess it's foggy out over the water, but inland it's more okay. So, so I want to bring it up on the four flight map right now while I'm flying here because I don't want to lose uh, X plane all of a sudden or something, but or a crash um, but we're literally flying right up the coast right now and that's the Pacifica flyway that you would request so right now you'd probably be on with NorCal approach actually you'd have to be on with NorCal approach because um, we're in that class C avail right now and uh, you would be requesting to go down this flyway but we're gonna just assume that we did that already Let's assume we're talking to NorCal and they give us a squawk If you're flying with Pilot Edge, um, they will have you abide by that stuff. So you will get a, and you probably wouldn't be at 4,000 feet right now. Uh, more than likely, you'd stay pretty low, maybe 1,500 feet or so. Mm 
All right, get that nose down, get her trimmed out. So yeah, we're coming right to our right right now is Santa, or I'm sorry, uh, San Francisco International. Right out there. That's why they have you go up this flyway too, by the way. So. I'm going to adjust, uh, I love realism, but I'm going to adjust the um, weather here a little bit. I want to be able to see all this nice ortho and we can't see it. All right, that's okay. That's okay. It's just the visibility is crummy. So let's pump that up to, let's go 30 miles, 28. It's good enough. All right. That's a lot better. Yeah, you couldn't see anything. It was like, what, 8 miles, 10 miles visibility? Not even that. So now you can kind of see where this flyway is. I'll show you guys on the map after I'm uh, in Petaluma. I'll bring it up on the screen so you can see what this flyway looks like. But I'm just hand flying this thing right now, so... We'll go outside here and I'll do an outside view as we come up on the Golden Gate. So this is all True Earth, U.S. Northern, um, Orbex. I really like it actually. Let's go outside here, hold your ears. Yeah, just the detail on this. I mean, look at that. downtown San Francisco and it works really good with the frame rates coming up on the Golden Gate Yeah, they did a really nice job on uh, the ortho here. All right. Knock everybody's eardrums out. So again, I'm hand flying this thing. We're not doing an IFR. We're just VFR flight. Enjoying the scenery right now. Heading up to another uncontrolled airport, which is Petaluma. I actually used to fly out of Petaluma. Um, so we'll do a... Again, uh, uncontrolled airspace, uh, well, it's controlled airspace. I shouldn't say it's uncontrolled, but um, there's no tower, so. It's still technically G and E airspace, so. And when you look on the map and you see those uh, magenta, like, um, not really magenta, but the brown dark lines that are around a non-towered airport. Um, that's dividing off your um, golf from Echo Airspace. And what that's doing is, let's see here, I'm just trying to adjust my yaw here. Um, what that's doing is that's protecting usually a IFR procedure, like a GPS approach um, into that airport. So that's why they, they have that protection around there. And usually it's up to 700 feet or 1200 feet AGL. Uh, and then after that, you're out of that airspace. And then if you're IFR, you're talking to someone at that point, like NorCal approach, that type of thing. Or as soon as you can get them at least.
Here, I'll put it on heading mode. And we'll go autopilot. Let's see, altitude 4000. GPS. Let's change that to heading. Heading mode. And we got the altitude we want. All right, let's go autopilot. I guess we're a little bit low. I'm like, why is it starting to climb? All right, go back seat. There. I can kind of take advantage of that. You can see all the ortho. It's awesome. Yeah, so you got Alcatraz out there to the far right. Uh, Angel Island, the Bay Bridge out there. Um... And then we're coming over right now. I think we're coming right into Sausalito, yeah. Right over top of uh, Mill Valley, that whole area. And then we'll go past uh, Santa Fel and then um, head into Marin County and then to Petaluma. So we're not that far out. We're pretty close. Actually, we're showing eight minutes. That's how fast we're cruising, so. Yeah, just look at all the detail down here. That's just crazy. So let's see what the... Um, I actually already did another video on this, but let's look at the frame rate right now. See what it looks like. Oops. So that's not bad. 40 for... So streaming plus recording my screen plus in this plane. This plane actually eats up a lot of... Uh, FPS and then also flying or over ortho uh, in the Bay Area So that's cranking. I mean you look down starts picking up a few numbers All right, let's go back out here Yeah, so right there what 40 So uh, my setup if you're curious is a um, Ryzen 7 3700, uh, and then the graphics card is NVIDIA uh, 27, 2070 uh, Supra, and 16 on the RAM, and then I'm running a uh, 1080p ultra wide um, 30 inch monitor, which I love these monitors. This monitor wasn't bad. I was able to pick it up on Amazon for just a few hundred dollars on sale. And it's not 4K or anything, but I can't stream 4K. And I wanted an ultra wide monitor without spending a bundle. So this worked out really nice. So I just picked up the mic. I'm picking up some uh, lighting that I have coming soon. And then my webcam is an older webcam. So I'm upgrading that. Um, I actually have a really nice uh, Rebel SL2 DSLR. So I just got a capture card for that. So the video for that will improve greatly. Throw a couple of lights behind me and make it a little bit more professional. Um, but it's more of a hobby for me. I work full time as a paramedic and then I'm doing this on the side. Uh, and then obviously I have other obligations and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's it's fun to do this, to share my knowledge. I've been a private pilot, pilot for years and years. I'm working on actually my CFI or heading towards that, doing my I, um, instrument rating right now and then heading towards my CFI and uh, commercial so I can teach for real so this actually is is kind of good for that too so gets me kind of into the teaching mode so i enjoy kind of passing that knowledge on and stuff all right 132.325 is our ADS set pedal when we're coming up Yeah, we should be 122, let's see, 122.8, or is it 7, let's see. Oh, 122.8. I 
think we're actually already on that. We were. Uh, let's see here. About 132.325. There we go. Oh, it is seven. All right. I was looking at the wrong one. Thought it was seven. Eight's actually out of the airport where I fly out of, for real. So. But I don't think, we'll see if it picks up or not. I don't think pedaling the last time I flew in here on X-Plane um, had any um, weather. All right, we are on autopilot, so I'll just use the autopilot right now to drop down. Eh, no. We'll go. Oh, I never turned off my fuel pumps. That's why you always double check your checklist. Alright. We'll do it manually, since I said I was going to talk about how to do this and stuff. And I don't think weather's coming up. It would have came up already, so we're just going to assume we know it. Usually it's 2.9 or there, so, and it's right traffic for runway 2.9, so that's what we're going to assume. We're coming up on it quick. It's right in the front of those uh, hills there. So let's get the autopilot off. And we'll go fuel pumps on now. Just so I have those out of the way. Check our fuel. It is good. Plenty of fuel to go. All the instruments are looking good. And we'll start dropping back the power. Get down here. So about 60%, 50% when you're dropping altitude in this plane. And then, uh, I mean, depending on how fast you want to drop, obviously. And then uh, when you get in close to the pattern, you're going to be really pulling it back. So you got to really slow this thing down. Uh, it's kind of like when you're flying the jets. If you don't slow it down early, you're going to blow right through your speed. So downwind, um, you're looking at, you know, 120 one, or 140-ish start dropping in your first set of flaps around 136 or so <clears throat> excuse me and then um, think about your gear coming down and beam the numbers or if you're going to have a long final do it on final and then start getting your last set of flaps i don't pull those in until i'm you know final to short final somewhere in there And again, this plane does not have a mixture. It doesn't have a prop. Uh, everything's computer controlled. All right, we can announce our position. Petaluma traffic, Diamond 7062 Delta is inbound from for landing from the south west. We'll be making uh, midfield for right traffic, 2-Niner, Petaluma. And pattern altitude, I think, is right around, yep, 1100, 1090. There's our airport right out there. So usually with passengers on board in real life, I'd be going sterile cockpit at this point. Just managing my speeds, uh, my checklist, think about everything I got to do. So. Petaluma also, if you're coming in here and you're coming from the east, usually those hills right out there beyond the airport, you hug those and then the best way to enter is coming around to a 45 for right traffic for a 2-Niner. It's almost always 2-Niner. Very rarely is it coming in from the other direction. So. All right, we're almost at pattern altitude. Hello, traffic diamond 7062 Delta entering midfield for right traffic 2-Niner full stop Petaluma. Ortho's killer here too. And the airport looks really good too because it has this uh, golf course down there that you can see right on my wing. there but 
that's okay, I gotta bleed off some speed. So you can see my speed with my nose up is really tapering off now because I pulled the throttle back. All right, first notch of flaps coming in. That's gonna bleed off even more speed. The drag is really gonna start kicking in. But also does wonders for our stall speed, which is good. Especially in the turns there going to base to final. And we'll start turning inbound, drop down our gear. We're at 116. Shooting for uh, low 100s to high 90s at this point. Alright, Petaluma Traffic, Diamond 1 or 7062 Delta on base for 2 niner full stop. Pull the throttle back a little more. Alright, I got three green, gear is down. Gas is good, no mixture, no prop, we're set. Landing light is on. Final. Hello, traffic 70, diamond 7062 delta final for 29er full stop. All right, we're a little fast, so we'll go uh, full flaps now. Got landing flaps in. Pull back that throttle a little bit more. It's about good right there, 95 or so, I'm at 97. When you get close to the threshold, start dropping down uh, to the high 80s. And then over the numbers, you should be right around 85. Glance down, check your uh, landing gear one last time, just to confirm, you don't wanna do a uh, wheels up landing, that's not a good thing. Trim her out a little bit more, she'll start slowing down. 87, 86, bringing back the throttle a little bit more. Coming over the numbers, low 80s. That's perfect. Throw it all the way back. Nose up. Oh. Oh. Nose a little bit more up than that. All right, clean her up. Flaps up. Hitting the brakes. And yeah, we'll get off right here. Clear left, clear right. There was actually a plane just recently that, uh, I told you I fly a Luscombe, but just recently um, ran into a Cessna 210, I believe it was, and a Luscombe. I don't know if you guys saw it on the news, but uh, that exact scenario right there, they were both going just a little too fast. In my opinion, the Cessna was going way too fast from what I saw, but anyways, just going too fast and um, coming from a blind corner some people said, well, it was a tail dragger. He wasn't doing S turns, but in the Luscombe, you can actually see plenty over the uh, windshield. So that wasn't the case. He did, they just weren't paying attention. Who knows? And anyways, they uh, clipped the wing on the Luscombe, hit the prop and uh, the front of the Cessna and I think part of their wing. So that requires the entire engine um, pull down overhaul on that uh, an inspection on that Cessna and that Luscombe needs a full new wing and the Cessna's probably going to need a new wing so who knows if insurance would total that or not but their premiums certainly aren't going to be good so all right we're going to pull over here this is actually the airport I learned to fly out of many years ago um, that white building right there doesn't look exactly like that in real life but uh that was Aero Venture Flight School. It's no longer there. They just closed down actually last year, uh, but it was awesome learning to fly out of there. So that's why I like to fly out of these areas. I know them really well. So it makes it easier to kind of do some sim instruction with you guys and that kind of thing. All right, brakes coming on. And you bring the power all the way back. By the time you get all your switches off, um, nav lights off and everything else, um, then uh, you can turn off the engine. So bringing the fuel pumps off. 
Oh, by the way, also in this plane, while I'm waiting to turn off the engine, um, you can put this headset on. So you'll hear why I don't. I have my volume set where I want it. And if I put this headset on, it makes absolutely no noise in the background. So I kind of like to have that engine noise in the background a little bit. But if I hit this, you can hear it just went dead quiet. So that's why I usually, um, even if I open up the window, it's, so you can't even hardly hear it. It turns that volume on the, uh, the plane interior and outside way down. So, all right. For this plane, the way you're turning it off is the master switch on each engine. So this one's just gonna go off. It's literally that easy. And starting, if you didn't catch it at the very beginning, it's the same thing. You're just waiting for the glow plug to come on and then turning off the, uh, the master, so. All right, window can come up, door can come open, go to the outside. All right, well, that's my uh, flight for today. If you guys uh, didn't watch this live, you have any questions, uh, hit me up. Uh, I am on Facebook. I have a group um, and also a page. It's uh, Pistons, Twins, and Turbines. You can just search it on there. You'll find it. Um, got a Discord coming up soon, like I said, and then... Um, uh, you can certainly follow me on here uh, and we can chat on here. Again, I'm going to be trying to stream um, every uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I believe is going to be my schedule. I might mix that up, throw in some extra streams. Uh, if I got some obligations or something, I might do one less, but that's the schedule I'm going to basically try to stay to. Um, as far as times, I haven't completely put the times out there yet, but if you follow me on any of those pages, then... Um, uh, I'm going to pre-post stuff up when I'm going to fly so you know that's coming and, and what I'm going to be um, doing. Most of them are going to be uh, instructional type review. Um, we'll do IFR flight, VFR flight. Um, I'm thinking about even adding like a full private pilot sim course on here and taking people from like first day, never flown before, and then all the way up to um, kind of the stuff we did today. So that's kind of my long-term outlook for this channel. Again, a lot of people are just flying jets and getting up to speed and flying them. I'll do occasionally a jet just for the fun of it. I've flown the 319, Airbus 319, a heck of a lot. Um, V1 simulations, he's awesome for that. If you like jets, uh, I've learned a lot from him. He's actually a real world pilot too, but he's an actually an Airbus pilot. So I highly recommend following him. I don't think he's on Twitch. I think he's only on Facebook. Uh, also, I take all these videos and they'll certainly be obviously posted to Twitch. They just got done recording and then um, I uh, take them and then I also post them to Facebook. Uh, I don't do any on the streams. I don't do any kind of um, uh, editing on them, but you will find other edited videos on uh, on YouTube. And again, on YouTube, same thing, pistons, twins and turbines. You can follow me on there. So thanks for uh, flying with me tonight and I'll catch you guys on the next flight.